Okay, I think we should be live now, right? Yes, but I don't see my Zoom people now. <laughs> Wait, maybe I do here. There we go. Okay, there we are. Okay. So, okay, thank you out there in uh, social media land. I am still trying to figure this out. If you are just jumping into our Facebook page, my name is Gila Kurtz. I am one of the co-founders and co-owners of Dog Is Good, a lifestyle brand for dog lovers, as you know from being on the Facebook page. Um, and I am so excited to talk to you guys today about like the thing that I'm most excited about in Dog Is Good right now. So um, stay tuned because I have three very special guests with me. And I can't wait to just have a casual conversation with them about the dog is good pop up shop. So I'm going to just ask uh, Janelle, who's watching, just to come down here, down the hall, one more second, just to give me a thumbs up if all is good. Are we all good, Janelle? Okay, I hear her through, through here. It's good. <laughs> good. Um, okay, so if you are just popping in, please say hello and where you are from and we're all good. Okay, hold on one second, Janelle. So because we're live, you know, you have, this is not gonna be perfect, I promise you. <laughs> um, I can't see any comments, so if you'll be commenting, that would be helpful. Okay, awesome. Um, okay, so if you are coming in, we are going to put in the link where you can enter to win our giveaway. As you know, every week we do a giveaway with our lifestyle show and this week, it's kind of in honor of just sort of what's been going on in my own life, which has been mildly chaotic, to say the least. But um, one of the things, if you've ever had to move from one house to another, um, as a military family, we had to do that every two years. So all my military peeps out there who are watching, I know I have no um, um, sympathy from you guys, and I don't expect any. <laughs> Nonetheless, for, from folks who've never had to do it, oh my gosh, it's a lot of work to move from a house to another house. So I feel very grateful, though, that we're able to find a home um, in the 11th hour, so to speak. And um, so I'm counting my blessings. So this is a giveaway that you can get. And also, as I was looking around the beautiful garden that's in the new house uh, that we'll be living with, I was thinking how lucky I was. I was counting my blessings also that I didn't actually have to be involved in the gardening component. So Never Garden Alone is one of our newest designs and you will win that as well. I'm grateful that I get to go in and it's already guard beautifully. Um, all the plants are beautiful and I'm sure it'll be a very peaceful place to, to relax and enjoy. So anyway, there's that. Also, if you have not already registered for your fur covered wisdom. I talk about this every single week because um, one, it's a personal passion of mine. This is something that comes from your dog directly to you every single Monday in your inbox. And in fact, I've had people tell me that they can't delete it ever because it's from their dog. So they're keeping these records of it every single week. And I, I just love that. Uh, you know, we really can learn a lot from our pets and that's the whole point around it. How can we fetch a life worth barking about and improve who we are on a daily basis and impact the world around us through our pets? That's what First Cover Wisdom is all about. Um, all right, on to a conversation with three of some of my most favorite people in the world that I, one who I've had the pleasure of knowing for a while, but two that I've just gotten to know this year. And I just want you to know right out of the gate, you guys have just shifted my life and affected it such in a, such a positive way. So I'm really sure that you took time out from what you're doing today to, to spend time with our audience and sharing um, the Dog Is Good pop-up shop program. So I wanna introduce you guys first and then we'll dive on into what this thing is and what you guys are doing with it. Um, and I'm gonna go back and forth, of course, into my email so I can uh, properly read your bios. But um, on our lower left is Leslie Karen who lives in Illinois, and um, just a little bit more. Um, uh, Leslie lives in Glen Ellen, Illinois, which is a suburb 
um, a suburb of Chicago. She currently, for the past two years, is self-employed. She's the owner of Leslie Sharon Events, which is doing pop-up retail for Dog is Good. And she is also an independent sales rep for Dog is Good and one of our best, I must say. She manages finances and operations for her husband's consulting company and has a long career in marketing and sales promotion and worked for six years in the pet boarding and daycare operations. Currently, she's an empty nester, I'm kind of like a half empty nester, Leslie. Like, her daughter is technically supposed to be out, but she's not quite sort of half in, half out. <laughs> That's okay, though. I, I enjoy having her. Her favorite interests and hobbies are reading. Uh, she loves writing and doing fundraising events for nonprofits. Dupage, I think I'm saying that correctly, I hope. Animal Friends, where she is a board member. So Leslie, thank you so much for joining us today. And next is Cheryl Newman, who, Cheryl, you probably don't know this, but you can keep trying regularly. <laughs> not not in a bad way. You bring you bring tears of joy Aww. all the time. But Cheryl is from Bell Bell, Illinois. She's a quality control loan documentation supervisor. Wow. Um, commercial and consumer loans. She has two dogs, Stella, which is a shepherd lab mix, and Lexi is a puggle, and she just loves spending time with her dogs, taking walks, hikes, reading yoga, and travel. And Leslie, I'm sorry, I think I forgot to name your dog. Did I? I did. I know, can Leslie, can you hear me, Leslie? Okay, and then Valerie um, lives in Connecticut. Uh, her current occupation, she is the chef owner of a food truck, which I bet is fantastic. She's the new shop owner and director of the Pepsi shop and caregiver to two elderly parents. Of course, um, you have your hands full for sure. The dogs in her life are Ollie and Iggy, Fuzzy Butts, two great Pyrenees rescues, and her favorite hobbies and activities are beach combing and hiking with her pups. She's also incredibly passionate about volunteer work with a national foundation called the Puppy Up Foundation, which funds comparative oncology studies. She's lost three dogs to cancer, and she's absolutely passionate about this cause and foundation. So with that, ladies, welcome, welcome. Can Give me a thumbs up. I want to make sure you can all hear me. Thank yeah? you. Oh, okay, great. And Leslie, I apologize. I forgot to mention your dog. So you could tell us. All right, I can't hear you. Can Cheryl or Valerie, can you hear her? No. I can hear you. Can you hear? I can't hear Leslie. Can't. Yeah, we can't hear you, Leslie. No. No, I can't hear you. Okay, stand by, guys. We're going to ask for your patience on this particular lifestyle show as we figure all this out. Definitely unmuted on my end. Still can't hear you. While you're trying to figure that one out, I'm going to just at least introduce the topic of our conversation today to the audience and just, you know, feel free to say test, test and test your volume while I'm doing that. But, um, okay, so when we first started Dog is Good, many people know this, but everybody knows this. We started by creating a few designs and we would go set up at events, local events, like dog walks or um, street fairs, or just any place where there were people, uh, particularly people who had dogs. And as we would do these events, we would get feedback from people and began to see what kind of messaging was resonating with them. And uh, it just kind of started to grow. This was before we even started uh, putting our products into retail stores. Well, anyway, one of my really good friends came out to California. She, she knew that we were that, uh, doing this and she wanted to kind of learn a little bit more about it. So she flew out here from Virginia. Uh, this is Kim Crocker, who now owns her 
um, business with um, her husband, Kevin, and I'll tell you their brief background in a second. But they, uh, Kim came out and spent the weekend with me while I did uh, a very large event here in Orange County. It was a pet expo. And at that event, she witnessed as people just went crazy for the Dog is Good brand and watched as our booth was absolutely packed were so excited and purchasing stuff and sharing their stories about their dogs. And so she turned to me and said, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. Like, I want to be able to do this when I go back to Virginia. How can I do this? And at the time I thought, well, gosh, this is great. You can totally do this. Just, um, we'll get you set up at wholesale and be on your way. And so she did. I really didn't give it much thought, but Kim um, and Kevin together as a husband and wife over the past eight years have built just this huge, amazing business doing this full time. And as they set up at different locations around the country, they would meet other people who uh, in, in the past year reached out to me and asked how they could do something like this too. And so, uh, well, first it, we brought on there was Leslie and then there was another woman, um, Cece in Colorado. And so it was just a handful of people doing this. All of a sudden it occurred to me last summer that we were sitting in a position where we could help other individuals their same passion that they had around their pets into a, a business opportunity that would be fun and exciting and so that's kind of where this whole dog is good mobile boutique concept was born and we ran a simple ad and i think valerie was one of the first people i talked to this was last summer and then uh, towards the end of the summer, I think Cheryl um, spoke with you. And all of a sudden now, there's people all over the country who are um, uh, reaching out to learn about this as an opportunity. And so I thought, you know what, let's have a conversation around like what is going on with it? What do you guys do? How is it fun? Why are you even doing it? And so I'm going to, I hope Leslie's time is working Oh no, oh no. Okay, well maybe I can um um gosh, let me do. You know what, Leslie, why don't you click off and try to click back on, see if that will reset it or just refresh it. In the meantime, I'll start with um with Valerie. So tell me first how you found out about this and maybe share like our first conversation and what prompted you to take that step to start this as an opportunity for yourself? Sure. I actually had seen one of your posts on Facebook um, about the exhibitor program. So I decided to go online, sent in my application, um, heard back from you very quick, and we had a wonderful, wonderful conversation. It was inspiring. Um, we shared so many different connections. Of course, dog being the, the number one connection and um, being so passionate about it as well as, you know, different areas around the country. Hey, there she is. Hey, Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Hey. Okay, so we'll let, we'll let uh, Valerie finish and then um, you can, we'll, I'll ask you the same question. Yeah, and then, um, so it was in the beginning of the summer and I think the first event I did was probably the, like, I think the Puppy Up Walk, which was October 7th of last year. And that's actually the foundation. I volunteer for so it was a perfect thing bringing everything I love together and I love the dog is good brand um, I was familiar with it previously and was so excited about this opportunity and it's just taken off and um, I count my blessings from you Gila because without you reaching out on Facebook and putting it out there I would have never known about this opportunity it's wonderful thank you okay so Leslie how did you find out about this it's been a couple years. You've been doing this for a couple years. Yep. Yeah. So I've been doing this for two years, and um, Gila and I have a mutual friend, uh, Jamie, who uh, shout out to Fetch Find, and uh, Jamie came to work uh, where I was working, and uh, she had on the uh, dog is my Zen tunic, and I said, where did you get that? And um, so she, I went to the website and uh, went to, um, Kim was doing a pop-up uh, nearby. And um, probably for, for four months, I kept going to the Dog is Good website and would 
go to the very bottom where it said exhibit for dog is good. Probably it took me that, you know, long every time I'd go there. And, and then finally I called Gila and, uh, and just had a blast. Uh, just having a great time. I am so, I'm so glad you did. And that we'll talk about it all. And then Cheryl, how did you find out about it and decide that you wanted to? I had, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I had seen some window car window stickers that where I buy my dog food and it was dog is my Zen because I love yoga. And I thought oh, that is really cool. So I, happened to um google that night on the computer dog is good and i fell in love with all the sentiments i mean they're just great and i thought wow that's cool and i bought a couple of shirts and i was watching uh or i was on facebook one day and gila popped up with the exhibitor um promo and it was at a time in my life that I really needed something to look forward to. My husband had passed away almost exactly a year earlier. And I got so excited just thinking about it. And it wasn't, didn't sound like a lot, um, you know, of setup costs, things like that. So I thought, well, what the heck? I might try this. And so I put in the application and I didn't even talk to you. I think the first thing was there was a meeting like that very couple couple nights later and I got on that so I saw all the other exhibitors and that got me going too so I'm like okay I'm doing this and it it's been fantastic I'm so grateful that that you've reached out and let other people do it it's great so much fun so Leslie um you have been this dog is good is doing this for a while and now you're also a, a rep for the company what um, what is it actually when you say I have a dog that's good pop up shop or I'm an exhibitor? What does that mean? What exactly do you do? I, you know, it's um, uh, going out to different kinds of events where you're going to find dog lovers. And so it could be, you know, pet, uh, pet expos, it could be adoption events. Um, dog lovers are everywhere. Um, uh, RV shows, camping shows, and they, you know, they have booths and it's about just setting up a retail boutique and, and selling dog is good. And the, and the products just sell themselves. I mean, they, you just, uh, you know, people come to the booth, it's making them laugh and, uh, or sad sometimes because they love their pets so much. And, uh, and then you're, you know, the, the sale is easy, but the, but the meeting the people is what's wonderful. So along the way, you started doing some things that really kind of um, were a, a, a little bit different in that you were do, you do events, as everybody does events, but you started doing things a, a little while ago that were, were you, you took, real, um, what's that saying, the, <laughs> the bull by the horn, I guess, and set up your own events. Rather than wait for something to pop up, you actually create your own pop-up. Can you... Uh, share a little bit about that and, and how you do that. Sure. So, you know, all the other events are mostly on the weekend. And, you know, in order to find uh, events during the week, uh, you, know, you start looking around again, where where are the dog lovers? And um, I started doing employee appreciation events, you know, so at a vet office or at a rescue um, those poor folks are working really hard and to come in during their lunch hour um, and for them to have you know, some fun. Uh, that's, I started doing that. I, uh, there are many dog training classes, again, where you've got you know, 20 pet parents uh, at this training. And again, you know, I'm off to the side and you know, selling pop-ups, selling dog assisted shirts. And, and you have, you know, a captive audience. So, you know, I found ways uh, to, you know, generate additional revenue during, you know, during the week. Yeah, that's awesome. And there is just so much opportunity here with the whether it's that. And you've even set up regular schedule things where you show up either once a month on a scheduled date or once a week. Yes, yeah, yeah. At the uh, at the VA hospitals, they have a program too, and so you 
you know you can get on the schedule and um, and and you know and have a, a regular time thing. And Valerie, so you you literally took the pop up shop to the tenth degree. It absolutely blew me away, which is one of the things I love about about all three of you is how you just come up with something and you just go for it. And so I wanted you to share because like behind you is this beautiful pop-up shop in a whole retail space. You were so savvy in putting this together and you did it so quickly. So I, I say that because people often get mired down in all this minutia of what ifs or how to. And you're somebody that just like, hey, I could do this and just take action. And literally within, I think it was like three weeks, I think about three weeks. Like yeah. that. You had this whole store set up. So why don't you share with us a little bit about how that came about and, and why you chose this as a particular opportunity for, for you. Sure. Um, first, let me preface my background was retail, visual merchandising, store design, um, analyzing sales and, and space. So pop-up shop that I opened was just going to be for holiday initially and it was at a local outlet center that had vacant space and I chose this outlet center it's in my town it's like a mile and a half from my house very close and I know the shopping here the patterns and uh, marketing data so being familiar with that this opportunity I just happened to reach out about something for holiday and it evolved within about three to four weeks into an actual 3,000 square foot store. Um, not all of it's selling space, it's in the it's back in the, in the office space, um, but it evolved. And of course, my first thought was, I could never afford to buy all of these dogs for merchandise, really make that huge of an investment to fill the space, but I wasn't gonna pass up on this opportunity. So I reached out to some other people that I knew from different dog events, um, see if they would be interested in joining me in this pop-up for holiday and they did and that's basically how we came about to have the Pepsi shop. So the core of the shop is Dog is Good and then there are other smaller market vendors here um, as well that have come in. See it's so brilliant because what Valerie did was basically I, I may not be using the correct word but sublet you know so, so rather than take on the full burden of the leasing space contracted out with other people also in the pet space and sure there's no competition between each person and created a full um store and everybody is participating and you guys have created such a, an amazing co-op too in terms of how you hire employees done as a co-op right yes exactly we actually share um the responsibilities of running the store which is great because that really saves on hiring individuals so we share the hours um again I live the closest, so I'm probably here the most, but I'm probably the most passionate. And so I, I shouldn't say that. I'm just as passionate, but because the dog is good, so passionate to me, and the business is so close and convenient for me that I'm here you know, most of the time. So, but what it is, what's great about it is it allows us to join forces for outside events as well. We have an event this weekend, um, so you know, maybe 60%, 70% of the set setup is gonna be dog is good, but there's also gonna be some other vendors in the shop um, that'll be represented. So we can you know, still have the presence here as a pop-up shop, but we can also do outside of events. So it's a nice, it's a nice avenue um, that provides you know, dual streams of income, you know, the standard you know, in the shop income as well as the outside events. That's great. And how, how long do you plan on keeping that that space because technically it was originally just designed to be for like a two month period something to do during the holidays correct and right now we're at least through august through the end of august oh, wow. um you know, and then there is the potential to continue on um it's a vacant space if a national retail store or chain wants to come in and take it there's always that chance um but you know we're rotating out seeing if there's different vendors pet vendors that would like to come in as well um to share the space and someone else an opportunity as well Okay, awesome. So I love that you brought your, your background to it um, to, to really create something that was you know, bigger than what I ever had thought was possible initially. And now it's like, oh my gosh, it's just a matter of what we can create together um, in our minds um, is, is what you can do. Now, Cheryl, you coming from a different background, of course, and you, you fell in love with the product. Um, it definitely, you know, touched your heart and meant something to you. 
what has been the process for you? Once you made the decision to take action, which again is one of the things I love about you three, it's not a lot of conversation around it. It's like, okay, this is what I want to do, and you guys are go getters and make it happen. What was it like as you started from scratch to figure out how you were going to start doing this? How were you going to build this? What, what steps did you take to start putting things into place? Um, well, at first it was picking out, you know, which package with you I wanted to get as far as shirts and things. And there happened to be a um, event coming up. It was going to be a Christmas event because I started this in December. So there was openings and I got on there as a vendor. Um, and then I was, I had a friend who actually does decorating and things like that. And she came and helped me kind of set up. So um, I wanted to keep it simple, but be able to have several shirts and, and it was, it was amazing. It just kind of all came together. I can't really explain it, but it, it just, um, I guess I've got a lot. Go ahead. Were you nervous or I should kind of pose that to all three of you, but I'll have you answer first. Were you nervous at all? Absolutely. I get nervous before every show actually. Okay. Because I'm like, oh my gosh, I never know where I'm going to be. Every show is different. So I never know how the setup is going to be. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope I can pull this off. But it, it all comes together. It is not really that hard. And I Googled a lot of things because I'm by myself a lot. I had to find ways to be able to set up and carry things easily. So I Googled a lot of things on the internet and I found, you know, cubes that pop together. So they fold flat and I found um, grid walls that fold and and it just kind of, it became an obsession for me. <laughs> and um, yeah, finding those things, I found a way to work where I can do it myself and it's not a huge deal. Um, and I sit down and, and I draw out plans of how I might want it to look and what shirts I want to put together and, and what items I, depending on where I'm going, you know, what I might want to sell. If it's more outdoors, then it's more the camp alone and that kind of thing. If it's more yoga, I, the Zen, but um, just a little bit of homework and sitting around at night and writing notes and making plans and it, it all comes together. It's really not that hard it's, and it's fun. For me, this is just fun. What, what makes it so fun? I'm curious for, for all of you. Actually, Leslie, just like, what what is so fun about it? I, you know, I think it's um, it's been the experience of meeting the other pet parents. You know, uh, it's so easy for people to talk about their dogs. It's harder for them to talk about themselves, and people just light up, and it and it makes for easy conversation, and it, and it and the sale becomes easy. They'll come into the booth. And you can, there, it's a family that's shopping for an uncle that, you know, goes fishing and they will just labor over picking the size and you just end up in a conversation with them and they're so happy about their purchase after they leave. And then I'll get, um, you know, I'll get uh, feedback from them, you know, through, through my app, they can leave responses and, and it's nice to get the feedback you know, about the experience they had or if they've told a friend about it. So, you know, all of that, it, it just makes it fun. Valerie? It's definitely the people, um, meeting the people, watching their reactions when they read the different um, sayings on the t-shirts. Um, and it's a, there's something applicable to everyone that makes them happy. Just seeing their smiles. I mean, I've had people come in woman particularly she was she had taken her dad to the hospital and she was waiting while he was in surgery and she came in and she just started smiling and laughing and she said I so needed this today she said you have no idea how how much this makes me happy today and it just took the stress of waiting off and so it's things like that seeing people respond and the emotional response and the happiness it, you know it's applicable to everyone there's something for everyone who does this good mind that performs my heart so much you know yeah, I 
cried when she told me that. I was just like, oh my goodness. And it was the, oh my God, I forgot to have children. And then, then she read the, you know, we had to give the kids away because Mr. Puddingstone was allergic. So she, it was those things that just made her smile and start laughing. So. You know, I just have to say one thing to that because someone asked me yesterday, and this is true story. Um, I was being interviewed, and somebody asked me what I like most about being an entrepreneur. And the first thing was uh, um, the opportunity to provide others with a place of employment and a chance to um, to grow and learn and whatever. You know, here. So I think uh, John and I both take that incredibly seriously chance that we get to um, to have a you know employ others but the second thing was um to have an idea that's in your head and in your heart and to take that from idea to a product that then touches someone like it like you just described that is crazy to me it, it makes everything worthwhile oh yeah thank you for sharing that yeah okay and cheryl what's the most fun for you oh absolutely the people it's all fun and games until someone ends up in a cone that I usually try and I put that in the middle and that is the first thing that everybody tends to see for some reason and they just laugh they get such a kick out of it I had someone buy almost everything I had that had that on it wow. last who I had I mean it was just and then the sentimental ones the veterans ones um yeah people will go from laughing to getting a tear in their eye the next minute. It's just, it's incredible to talk to people about that. And, and yeah, I call them dogisms, but the dogisms on the shirts, that's. So I'm curious to know, like, you know, anytime one starts a business, it doesn't matter what kind of business you're doing. And, and the beauty of this operation really is that you can do it very part-time, anytime when you feel like it full-time as many people are currently doing um, because there's, you know, dog is good, as you know, does not require that you do any certain amount of work because it really, it is your own business. So given that it is your own business and you are entrepreneurs as well, um, what, I'm going to ask you guys the same question. What do you like most about being an entrepreneur, being in control of something um, that is, that you can grow as big or as little as you want and and are there is there anything um that is a challenge for you as you're trying to build this business Leslie we'll start with you I you know I I think it's um it, it's probably managing because I'm I'm solo I'm by myself so it is managing all the aspects can can get busy and then um you know uh, I I um in, you know taking inventory and planning and forecasting is is a you must do it thing but it you know it, it does take up time and you have to be very thoughtful so it's probably that part uh because all the other stuff is you know fun um and setting up the booth is fun um but but making sure that that you've got enough um i always get nervous before a show also because uh, you know, there'll be a shopping frenzy at, at the right at the beginning. And I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't bring enough. You know, there's always that panic. So, um, yeah. Uh, so that probably the challenges are the, the forecasting and planning. Um, I, I agree um, with the forecasting and planning. That can be a challenge. Um, but I think the factor um, that I love, A, it's fun. Um, I really love it. I enjoy it. I love the people. I love everyone at Dog is Good. Um, I, I think just having the opportunity to own your own business and run your own business, I love that aspect. I think it's just a great thing. Um, you know, with, with here, it's an actual shop and stuff running the shop. So it's basically like having your own little downtown shop, even though we're open just four days a week and stuff. But it's, it's truly... You know, that opportunity, I think, to run your own business, that's phenomenal, and I love that. Um, you know, as with every business, I think there, there's challenges and stuff, but the, the, the good things outweigh the bad, you know, the challenges so, so much more that you don't even really think about those challenges. It's just it's like, okay, that's a couple hours. Let me, you know, go through something and figure out, did I get enough, did I get enough, or, you know, something else. But, yeah, I think it's just owning your own business and operating with something you love. 
Yeah. That's something that your life is passionate about, dog. I mean, for most of us, it's dogs. And, and yeah, dogs. I have to say, if, um, because I love talking to entrepreneurs all the time, but man, if it is not something that you are, are in love with, and I always, always talk about the bigger reason of why you do what you do, on um, those days when, you know, you're having a bad day or things that come up against some challenges, um, and it, you know, you know, the bigger picture of why you're doing what you're doing. So that's good. Okay, and Cheryl, how about you? Um, I, for me, I think it's more the the taxes and the sales tax and that kind of thing because I don't have that business background. But you know, I figured it out, and I love the fact that there is an exhibitor group that you have on Facebook that you can go on and ask a question, and everybody's on there and gives advice or gives their responses. That has been. So you're not alone in this, you know, you've got everybody and that, that has been phenomenal. Well, great. I'm so glad you mentioned that. I wanted you guys to, um, you know, as this has evolved and I've been sharing, like this is a work in progress, this whole program. And, um, but it is my core passion within the company. Uh, someone who could not be on here today is a lovely woman, Lori Llewellyn. So if this is a program that you're interested in learning more about, you're going to get to know her very well. She is just phenomenal. She's the director for the program. And um, we, together as a team, are so committed to, to you guys and providing the right support. So how has it been, just in this past year, as we've been trying to put all these little pieces into place for you in terms of the support and the, um, the outreach? And I don't know. I just want you to maybe share your experiences with that. Leslie? Yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed the, the Facebook group. Um, you know, on the weekends, it's really helpful to see how other folks are, um, how cute, how other folks are, are, are doing their boots because I've gotten some, you know, good ideas from that and, um, and just the conversation and just the support, you know, uh, I think that it's very encouraging. So that's fun. And Leslie's been, you've been so gracious too, both you and and Valerie actually helping through the trainings, like we do a monthly training. And so both of you have done training on what you are doing specifically in your business. And I love that go-giver, you see my book right there, like the Bible I look by, the go-giver um, approach to helping others uh, because it just brings things back tenfold. Valerie, so how about you, your experience in, in the network as we're growing it and the support behind it? It's, it's been great. Oh, the support is amazing. From, from starting with you, Gila, from day one, the support, um, you're an inspiration, and the support you've given is amazing. And Lori, I love her. She's a hoop. She's so much fun to work with. Lori, if you see this and you're watching, we love you. And the support of everyone else, um, all the other exhibitors, from the monthly exhibitor calls to just knowing that you can email and reach out to someone as well as have the Facebook group of exhibitors. I mean, it's great. Leslie and I have spoken offline and, you know, we've kind of hashed some ideas about things, you know, in business against, you know, with each other and stuff. So it's great to like, you know, pick someone else's brain, like, you know, on what's happening. So it's a great support system. Um, and I can't thank you guys enough. All of you. Oh, I'm so glad that, and I love how you guys connect offline too. How about you, Cheryl? Oh, it's yeah, there, the support is, I couldn't have done this if there hadn't been the monthly call, the Facebook group. And again, you and Lori are great at, you know, if you have a question, you email, you get an answer right away. It, it's just, I could, I don't, I think I would have gotten really discouraged and probably quit because I wouldn't have known what I was doing. And I've gotten a lot of good tips from people. And yeah, that monthly exhibitor call is awesome. Um, we learn a lot from that. And, and me too. I learn a lot from you guys constantly. Um, so we do have a question for, on the Facebook and from Cindy, and she's asking, how many hours a month do you put into your pop-up shop? And I'm going to answer the first one uh, myself because from um, on the dog is good side of things, Lori and I put in a lot of time. Um, I personally handle at this point moving forward, all of your, um, the orders that are coming in and fielding them and making sure that they're getting processed because you guys uh, take precedence and um, your orders go out uh, right away. 
Um, but I just also started getting back into doing the pop-up shop myself. And so um, my plan is to be doing uh, at least an event a week, whether it's a farmer's market or a weekend event. And so, um, you know, however many hours that takes between setup and breakdown and whatnot. And really the energy that comes from that is being fueled by the consumer. I forget because I'm not the consumer as much as you guys, how much they give you, it's like a charge. And I'm so excited about that. So we'll just keep going round table. Leslie, how many hours would you say you're putting in per month? You know, it's it's hard It's hard because it ebbs and flows. It's It can be seasonal. You know, here in Chicago, you know, not as many shows in maybe January, February. That's when all the RV and the camp camping shows are. But uh, boy, now you know it's a it's an event a week, and um, last year I did forty two events. So it there it it's really as much you, as you want to make it, um, and then the you know the prep time for each one. Gosh, it's, it's like you lose track of time. You know, I mean, it could be it could be 16 hours of prep just to make sure everything's packed and the car's loaded and everything's folded. And, you know, it's getting really operationally smart uh, about how you load in and load out, you know, a lot of that. And that comes with experience, too. Uh, yeah. 16 hours of prep? Yeah, it can, it can be in, like, just making sure that I have everything folded and I, I want things on hangers. And yeah, I mean, it can be. Oh, wow. okay. For me, for packing out, it probably takes me a couple hours to pack out. Pack the van and get it all so. Valerie? I'm going to say for, for event setups and for packing out and loading up and unpacking, maybe like four hours total. Because you usually get there a couple hours early. I always have trouble with the pop up tent. That's that's my nightmare is setting up that darn pop up. It's an easy effort. You have to go, oh, not, hurry, help not, me. That's the that's the hard part for me. But um, <laughs> you know, other than the maybe hour I spend setting up the pop up tent, um, it's it's probably about four four hours maybe. Um, you know, between the actual packing it in the bins, you know, traveling, transport, and then unpacking and setting it up. So maybe like four hours for the bench for setting it up. And then the actual time of the event. The, yeah, exactly, plus the time of the event. So, I mean, you know, packing could happen a couple of days before the event, too. So you right. might pack Thursday if the event is on a Saturday. So, right. you know, and it, I, I try and fold everything, too, like Leslie does as I'm packing it, going through. Um, I have these little folding boards yeah. on Amazon, so they do make it a little bit easier, um, you know, using the folding boards, and it actually keeps them... I thought you were going to lift one up. I'm like, do you have one? Oh, no. I have it in the warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. These great little folding boards um, that really do get that crisp fold and stuff. So while I'm packing, if I need to refold some, I'll refold. And yeah. And just a little sidebar on those. Um, for any of you watching, if you have one, they're actually pretty cool or have never had one. They're pretty cool. They keep the fast fold close. So it's really great to get your teenager to um, fold the laundry. It's kind of fun, actually. <laughs> Cheryl. Um, for an event, I leave everything folded and packed up in bins all the time anyway, just because I work full time plus so I don't have a lot of time. Um, I might shift things depending on what kind of show it is and if I'm not taking everything. So I pretty much leave everything packed up and right now I just got a new old van so I leave most everything in the van anyway so I'm ready to go. Um, yeah, a couple hours to set up maybe, and pretty much I can throw stuff in and get un, uh, everything torn down in about an, a little over an hour, yeah. and then plus the event, and then just during the week, just kind of making sure I've got what I need and this and that, so, I mean, it's, it's not that bad, and, and you learn tricks along the way, right. absolutely. <laughs> so, um... I don't know about you guys, but as far as finding places where you want to do this kind of thing, um, it is pretty easy to locate different kinds of events. Um, besides going online and looking at Bring Fido or just your local chamber of commerce or anything else, where, do you have any advice on where people might be able to find places where they would do initial events 
and then how uh, suggestions on how to find opportunities that are not event related, like what uh, Leslie does as far as going into places. So um, maybe just real quick answers on, on those. Leslie? Um, uh, you know, hospital gift uh, shops are usually run by volunteer groups and um, they're always anxious to do fundraisers so you can partner with them. Uh, so that's a, that's a really good place to look. Um, and then, like I mentioned, the VA hospital is another opportunity. And then um, I did uh, get a, a request at um, a boat vendor, you know, a, a showroom. Uh, where they asked, they did, they don't carry dog, it's good, but they said, you know, we're going to have an open house, can you come do pop-up? And I'm like, that, that that's awesome. So um, just through networking, you know, that came about. Um, I, you know, definitely the online listed events and things and networking. Um, there's also different like campgrounds. A campground locally is putting in a dog park. So they want us to come and be a part of their brand opening for their dog park um, and set up something there because they love the Never Camp Alone and the Never RV Alone um, line. Also veterinary hospitals and vet associations. Um, those are great, great clients and they love everything. I mean, they'll end up buying up, you know, most of your merchandise if you do like a, a um, little trunk show there. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually recently was approached by a pet store um, that's based in Canada called Pet Value to see if I wanted to do a trunk show at their shop because they don't have any apparel or anything and they love the dog and the brand. And they see me go in with my t-shirts buying, you know, dog treats and things. And um, they were like, oh, where'd you get that shirt? And I'm like, oh, it's good, you know? So they're, they're interested in doing actually a trunk show. So you bring up a good point, and I want to mention this because one of the things that you're an expert at is creating experiences for your customers in your own shop there. And one of the beauties behind doing a trunk show at other retail stores who don't carry dog is good is that you are giving them a chance to create an experience for their customers coming in. So it's such a brilliant idea to go to existing retail stores, not just in the pet space, but in, in any retail space, like I'll be doing one in a women's boutique um, coming up uh, in June. So it, it, it just is a great way for them to engage their customers on a different level. How about, how about you, Cheryl? Um, I have signed on with, on Facebook, there are like vendors of Southern Illinois, vendors of Central Illinois and, or St. Louis. There are vendor groups out there that you can join for regional areas and they post all the events going on and people and there are always people looking for vendors so that's been a big help recently hey that's a great one i didn't even know about that yeah yeah um and then just networking talking to the other vendors at the shows is great because they they're all dog lovers too so they know things or other shows that might be good to go to um and just I wear the shirts all the time and I have people all the time go, like you said, where'd you get that shirt? And I'm, well, you know, so that brings about conversation and, oh, well, you know, maybe they know us of a store or they own a store, or they know of the event coming up. So, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's so great. Well, um, I know we're going to wrap up here. If anybody has questions, I think Janelle, since I can't see any comments, is going to um, raise these questions down to me. <laughs> Um, but I, first and foremost, I want to thank all three of you for spending time with me here today. I want to mention to everybody watching that um, this pop-up shop opportunity really is a lot of fun. And it is um, just been so much fun for all of us here at Dog is Good, too, that are uh, on the back end supporting you guys. And I want to invite you to learn more about it. To do that, you just need to click the link that we'll provide. And step number one is if you watch our videos and gather the information and like what you see and want to have a personal conversation, you'll just set that up with uh, Lori and myself and we will happily answer all of your questions and take you through step-by-step -step process um, by which to get launched and become a part of our growing team here. Um, you'll have access, of course, to everybody that currently is running their business and everybody is doing it differently. And yet, Similarly, all at the same time. So um, it is a great group of individuals. And so 
Um, before I say goodbye, I want to give you guys one last word on what you would share to others who are looking at this as an opportunity for themselves and just haven't made a decision yet. Is there anything you would like to say that might um, help them decide to, to be a part of our, our growing group? Okay. You know, I, um, if you if you enjoy uh, meeting people and you enjoy the dog community and the pet community, you can you'll have a blast. All right. Yep, definitely. If you like to have fun um, and you love dogs and you love meeting people, just do it. Don't be afraid. Um, you, I, I, I assure you, if you try it, you're gonna love it. You're not going to turn back, and even you'll question why did I take so long to do it? And Carol, ditto and ditto. Um, yeah, I try it. You'll get hooked. <laughs> one last thing that we didn't even cover because I never even think about this, but it's probably an important piece. Is I'm assuming the fact that you guys are still doing this, you actually do make some money. Is that correct? Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. So it can be profitable too, of course. All right, guys. Well, I want you to enjoy your Wednesday. Please reach out to, uh, to me for more information on this. Thank you to amazing women who you always, I'm always humbled when you say I inspire you, but I am not kidding you. You guys inspire me and give me the people every single day to, uh, to do more and more and more so I can, you, know, you guys are successful. And I learn a ton from all three of you constantly. So thank you. For, for that and um, I appreciate you very very much. So, thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, listen, have a great Wednesday. Thanks so much. If you have not um signed on to win the prize, the prize today is your um count your blessings decorative magnet and never guard it alone, one of our newest summer designs t shirts. And uh, sign up for your first covered wisdom if you have not done that either. And then to learn more about this as an opportunity We'll provide you with the link as well. And thanks for sharing your afternoon with us here at Dog is Good. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.